Well, Argyle on the road again, four days on from defeat in Sheffield. This time it's Lancashire, Ewood Park to be precise. And a date with another side desperately looking over their shoulder. Both Argyle and Blackburn are in a scrap at the bottom of the championship. Locked on 40 points. Couple clear of the drop zone. Back in sunny September, it was Argyle that got the better of the game. Will it be the same again today? That is what we are all hoping for. Hello, good afternoon. This is the pre-match show on Argyle TV. I am Charlie Price and it is very, very much the crunch stage of the season. Ten games to go for both Argyle and Blackburn to try and stay in the division for another year. It is oh so tight at the foot of the championship table. Just two points separating Argyle in 16th and second bottom Sheffield Wednesday. There are seven teams bunched in and amongst that little group of sides as well. So points are ever so important. And as always, you can follow all of the action for the final 10 games of the season with us here on Argyle TV. We will do our best to make it as bearable as possible over the next couple of months. Now, joining me to help get through everything today and part of the uniform club that we've got going on is former Argyle women's captain Katie Middleton. You got the memo. Grey, grey jumpers. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to wear a grey jumper on a grey day, hey? <laughs> if it does sum up the, fee- <laughs> the, the, the the kind of atmosphere, doesn't it? The, 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 the weather at this moment in time. Um, hopefully... We'll be feeling bright and sunny come the end of play today, though, because it is a big one, isn't it? It's a massive game today, isn't it? And I think, you know, off the back of Tuesday night, disappointing result. Um, And as you say, it's so tight down at the bottom of the league that, yeah, I feel like today has a lot riding on it. You know, a loss today isn't the end of the world. There's still nine games to play after today. So plenty of points still on offer, but... Yeah, it's, it's so tight down there that a win definitely propels you up a little bit and just gives you that, that buzz to to kind of go into a, a run of games coming up. Mm. Both sides, obviously, with new head coaches. You'd imagine neither side would have imagined that they would be in this position at this stage of the season. You go back a month, they were both a good few points clear from where they are now. Yeah, I think that both teams have been been sucked back in, haven't they, with the, the recent run of results and... Obviously, the teams down and around them have been picking up points as well, and that's closed the gap again. So, yeah, you know, neither side would have expected, neither side would want to be in the position that they're in currently. Um, but it is what it is, and it's about how you bounce back from those results we've had recently and, and try and get a few more points on the board. Yeah, well, coming up over the next few hours, we will, of course, have the game in full for you. Uh, match passes can be bought online right now. International supporters can watch the game for £10, whereas UK-based fans, it's audio commentary for you. £2.50 will be your match pass. Um, as well as hearing from the Argyle head coach and Michael Cooper as well on what Ewood Park means to him, we'll also, at half-time, uh, be previewing tomorrow's uh, FA Women's National League South game between Argyle and Cardiff City ladies. Uh, before any of that, though, let's get the all-important team news for this afternoon's game. They're the Argyle team arriving just a, a couple of moments ago. And uh, Ian Foster has rung the changes a wee bit. Five in total, including... A return to the starting lineup for Michael Cooper, making his 150th start for Argyle today on the pitch. Katie Middleton, it all started out. Yeah, and I think, you know, great to see Coop's back in goal. Um, you know, Hazard has obviously had a run of games. I think as good a, a shot stopper as Hazard is, he you know, potentially distribution wise is not as good as, as Michael Cooper. So um yeah, an opportunity for Coops to come back in today and, and reclaim that number one shirt and, and show what he's all about. Yeah, the other changes see Plagathwello, Bali Mumba, um Jordan Houghton and Mustafa Bundu come in. And for the likes of Mumba and Bundu it's a fairly rare start for both of those. Yeah, and again another opportunity for those players to show what they're capable of, I think this season, we haven't necessarily seen the best of Bali Mumba. Um, you know, he's not necessarily been given the opportunities that he, he obviously had last season. And, 
you know, you don't suddenly become a bad player overnight. You don't go from being, you know, the best young player in League One to not being able to to start a game and and put on a performance. And you know, we've seen little cameos from Bundu. He's had a bit of run of bad luck with injuries as well. And you know, he showed what he can do on on Tuesday night when he came on. So looking forward to seeing him from the start, and hopefully he just gives us that little bit of a a creative spark again going forwards and maybe fills that gap that we've been somewhat lacking um, in that sort of number 10 role over the last couple of months, really. Yeah, Uh, and, you know, that has been something, and we'll touch on it a little bit later on in the pre-match show, the fact that goals have dried up of late. Um, Looking at that, you'd hope the likes of Bali Mumba coming in with that attacking intent that we've seen so often in an Argyle shirt. Mustafa Bundu, as you said, came on, made a really positive impact, as actually did Jordan Houghton when he came on on Tuesday night as well. He, he sort of started driving forward from midfield too. Yeah, and I think that's what's been lacking really in, in recent weeks has maybe been that drive to get numbers up the pitch. You know, Ryan Hardy at times has been really isolated. You know, he's not going to do anything against uh, often a back three of, you know, big hefty centre-backs who are going to win headers. Um, and then if there's no one up with them, you can't pick up second balls. And that's the important thing, you know, can... Bundu come in, can, yeah, the likes of, you know, Jordan Houghton, who's maybe playing a little bit deeper, Adam Forshaw, can they be positive and, and you know, drive the team forwards? And and ultimately, that's what the fans want to see. That's what's been lacking. Um, and it's that excitement that we came to know and love so well um, at the start of the season and why we scored so many goals that's kind of seems to have disappeared a little bit lately. So, yeah, hopefully that that drive, that determination from the middle of the park can, can get us up the pitch a bit, a bit better. OK, let's have a look at the Blackburn Rovers side as well then. They, uh, they're still looking for their first victory, actually, under their new head coach, John Eustace. He's made a couple of changes from the side that drew midweek um, against Millwall. Let's see, Sigurdsson and Ayari come in, uh, taking the places of Garrett um, and Dolan. So um, they're, they're pretty settled, but they, are, they like Argyle, Katie, are looking to try and just get a win from somewhere at the moment. They've had, well, five draws in the last six matches, haven't won yet so far in 2024. Yeah, a, a team who, uh, I guess, although are picking up points, obviously... You know, they are desperately looking for three rather than ones that they seem to be picking up at the moment. And, you know, we know they've got dangerous players in that side who can cause problems. They've had a relatively settled sort of back three, back five, if you like, with the the wing backs. And, you know, they're a side who obviously have a, a danger man who's who's well in form um, in Smodic. And, you know, Sigurdsson can add some goals again from midfield. I think he's their second top scorer in the championship this season on on five goals, I think. So he's, he's away behind Smodic, but, you know, he can add something to, to this team today. And, yeah, it's very much about Argyle today, I think, and how they go and, and approach this game as to, to whether we get anything out of it. You know, like we said, it's a massive game for, for both sides. And, you know, is the pressure on Blackburn with them being at home? Are they expected to go and get something more out of the game than, than Argyle? You know, potentially it works in Argyle's favour with, you know, going away. Is anything expected of them? you know, maybe not as much as as a home game. So, yeah, can they go and, you know, really push on and, and try and cause some problems for that Blackburn starting eleven? Yeah, you, you mentioned Sammy Smodix there. Um, it's only right we, we talk about him because he's the league's top scorer. He's got 20 goals. Not your sort of classic centre forward either. Um, more difficult to deal with, I'd imagine, because he picks up those little pockets. Yeah, and he's kind of, you know, small, nippy, agile, gets in those areas that you don't want him to be in you know he wants to turn and face you up and as a defender you know that's the worst thing you want is someone who's banging form running at you with the ball so um yeah we know the quality he's got you know he's obviously in a rich vein of, of form he's scored in his last couple of games and you, know, you don't score 20 goals in the championship if you're not a very good player so um certainly a player that Argyle are going to have to be very wary of today. I think, you know, Houghton and, and Forshaw in front of the back three will have an important job to try and stop the ball being fed into Smodic as much as they can. You know, he does like to pull away and play a little bit wider at times. So, um, yeah, it's being wary. And and again, as, as those wing-back roles, kind of making sure that they're, they're doing their defensive duties today to try and you know, cut down on those spaces that Smodic can find and, mm. and cause problems. Yeah, Sam Gallagher as well. We all know former Argyle kid. Um, he is also a danger too up front. Uh, so they're the two teams. Let's dive inside the Argyle camp now. As we've mentioned a couple of times, both sides are 
very, very desperate for a win this afternoon. Argyle have just one win in their last eight matches and had that big blow of defeat against relegation rivals Sheffield Wednesday on Tuesday night. Head coach Ian Foster, he has a bit of a job on his hands to try and keep spirits high in the camp. We stayed over in, in Sheffield after the game. Um, uh, we did a recovery session Wednesday morning before before travelling back down. So uh, players haven't really had it, uh, uh, any time off this week um, because Wednesday was a travel day. Um, they've had a little bit of um, a breather this morning. Um, we'll have an afternoon session. And, um, yeah, we, it'll be an active recovery session. That's all it can be for the starters. The, the, the boys that didn't start the game will do a little bit more. Um, and we begin our preparations for Blackburn. Mm. When results don't go your way in any kind of sports or walk of life, you know, p- people will look at the group and say, is the confidence going to drop? Is is it going to affect coaching staff, players, what have you? I'm not saying that is the case here, but how how do you, as a as a head coach and a coaching staff, try and avoid that creeping in when results don't go? Well, it, it starts with the culture of the group, you know, and when you originally come into the building, you build a culture. Um, and, you know, we explained to the players that this wasn't ever going to be a... Um, a linear journey from um, from start to finish. It was always going to be a roller coaster ride, and it and it is that at the moment. And we've had ups and we're having downs at the moment. Um, but what we need to do is just remain calm, um, remain together, remain focused on our roles and our responsibilities, um, and, and we'll be absolutely fine if we do that. Um, it's never easy losing games of football. None of us enjoy it. Um, Players, staff, supporters alike, you know, we, we all want to win games of football. We're all desperate to do that and we're desperately trying hard to do that. Um, but it goes back to the culture and environment you set. And if that's strong, um, that when you're tested, like we are being at the moment, um, as a group, we stick together. How crucial is it then to try and get the, the next positive, so the next mm. good result? Well, yeah, of course it is, yeah. The longer it goes on, the more it hurts, the more it stings, the more... Um, uh, you do get tested as a group, um, you know. Like I say, we we try desperately hard in every game, um, and, and Saturday will be no different to try and get three points. Do matches against sides that are near us? So Wednesday, obviously on Tuesday, but Blackburn again on Saturday. Do, do they hold any extra significance because of the difference you can maybe make in, um, in the table? Not our approach to it, it because we. As much as we wanted to be Blackburn Rovers, we wanted to be Sheffield Wednesday, we wanted to be Dipswich, we wanted to be teams before that. So um, we don't change our approach. We try and win every game of football. Um, and, uh, you know, Blackburn has um, the noise around it because of where, where we are in the division. Um, mm. But everybody's that close at the moment. Um, you could say that for most teams. So we, we, we desperately want to win the game at Blackburn. Um, so, you know, we, we understand... Um, how tight the division is at the minute and how crucial it is to get points on board and, and like I say we'll desperately do our best to do that Without giving the whole game plan away how, how's the best way to go and do that at Blackburn to get the win? Um, remain true to our values you know, and our principles um, the, the players have to um, give the best that they can be. They always have to give the very best in order to get points in this division because it's very, very challenging and very tough and very demanding. Um, and I believe that when we do that, we, we've got a chance of getting points on the board and we've proven that in recent weeks um, against against really good opposition. Um, Saturday will be no different, so we have to make sure that um, tactically and principally we get it right and if we do that, we'll give ourselves an opportunity. Ian Foster there um, talking to me a little earlier on in the week. When you, when you are on a bad run as a player, Katie, and pro- you probably didn't have many in your career. There was a few. <laughs> um, how difficult is it to do what he's doing there and just trying to remain as positive as possible? Because you do hear it said by players and staff all the time, yeah, the atmosphere is great. And it, it may well be, but, but how, how do you go about creating a positive vibe still? I think... You know, like you said, it's about making sure you do the right things, you know, in training on the on the grass as much as you can, and you know, having that, you know, friendships and and stuff off the pitch obviously helps with with that. Um, and it's about, you know, even if things don't go your way, 
you know, are you trying to do the right things? Are you, are you playing the right way? Are you trying to get across what the manager's trying to get you to do? You know, sometimes those things don't work out for you on the pitch on a on a Saturday or a Sunday, but, you know, are you building and, and trying to improve on things, I think, is the key thing. You know, there are times, obviously, when you get stuck in these ruts where you don't pick up many points and it is demoralising and you think, oh, where's the next win going to come from? Um, but it's about just constantly trying to do the right things and, and making sure you're working hard for each other. And I think that's the key thing, really, is can, if you know you're putting in a shift and you're putting in 110% every week, every game, you know, you, can you ask for any more? You know, that's I think the key thing is is making sure you work hard for each other. And often the team that works the hardest is the team that comes out on top. So mm. um, I think that's you know what what the Argyle fans want to see from the players is that everyone's you know digging in and and working hard and and obviously trying to get those three points on the board as quickly as they can again. Yeah, and and you know sometimes it is just about a little break going away, like a drop of the ball. Like what happened to Sheffield Wednesday, actually, I, I suppose on Tuesday, they had that little slip from Forshaw, had a big opportunity, something like that. If it just goes your way, yeah, it could change the feeling. Quite yeah, a bit, and you know, it? I think you look at the the Ipswich game, mm. you know, the first goal in that is uh, obviously a deflection off Galloway, and it and it goes in. So, yeah, you know, someone to score off their bum or something is maybe what it's <laughs> going to take today to, yeah, just change that that luck a little bit, and you know there's so much luck that that happens in a game of football and you know often you'll find it runs a lot for one team not so much for the other so yeah hopefully today again that luck is on our side rather than Blackburn's yeah Uh, and and one other thing that you know sometimes can make a bit of a a difference positively is just a new voice obviously a new coach came in Simon Ireland um, who is with the the side until the end of the season Um, Obviously, a lot of the coaching staff went when Stephen Schumacher left the club and they haven't really been filled as to this moment in time. But that's a positive, surely, isn't it? Someone with his experience. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think, you know, potentially it needs that other voice on the sidelines. I think if you, you know, if you look at the last couple of seasons when it's been, you know, it was Ryan Lowe with obviously Shuey and then, um, you know, Shuey and Mark Hughes and the two work hand in hand. And sometimes it's just, just about being able to, bounce different ideas off people mm. obviously I know Nance and, and Juice Nip have been in the, the dugout but you know when you can have that close working relationship with someone as an assistant coach then you know you can like I say you can bounce ideas off each other you can you know one might see something differently to, to the other and you know, that allows you to make changes during a game and I think that's probably something we haven't seen a lot of from, from Ian Foster so far as those in-game changes and you know can when things aren't going your way can you you know, maybe a tweak in formation or, you know, personnel at the right times. You know, I think you look back to Tuesday. For me personally, it was crying out for changes at half time, And we wait till maybe the 70th minute before we do something. So, you know, maybe this will give them a bit more of a an impetus to, to make those changes at the right times during games. And, you know, just another person to be around and bounce ideas off. Yeah. On the bench today for the first time, Simon Ireland. Uh, let's see whether he can have a positive impact. You are watching the pre-match show on Argyle TV with the Greens up in Lancashire taking on Blackburn Rovers. Um, 1,400 Argyle supporters made the journey up to Ewood Park today. Tremendous from them, as always. And you can follow all of the action. If you're not lucky enough to be there with us here this afternoon, you can get your streaming passes, video or audio, online right now. One of the biggest things that has gone against Argyle, I suppose, in recent weeks has been the ability to, or lack of ability, to put the ball in the back of the net. Four of the last five matches, Argyle have failed to score in, which is a pretty remarkable feat for a side who have the second top goal scorer in the division in Morgan Whitaker, and were free-flowing and scoring plenty of goals at the, in the first part of the season. Now, on Tuesday night, Aaron Cusack was sat in this very studio and as part of the after show was talking about why he feels things are not quite clicking at the moment. The Sheffield Wednesday match was a, a fourth out of their last five where they failed to score. Yeah. And we've got a couple of examples of decent positions 
that Argyle did manage to get themselves into. Yeah, and I think the first one was JB, and you know, um, sorry, this is the Hardy one, isn't it? So as it comes through, so this was, you know, this is a good regame from um, from Randall. It's gone into Whitaker now. What Sheffield Wednesday wanted to do all night was smother the ball from all angles. And if Ryan Hardy makes his run towards that line earlier... Now, I think if you pause it there, there's the pass. There's the pass. There's an opening there. If you look at the the deepest central defender, he's running back towards Forshaw. So he's blindsided anyway. So a little through ball into the box invites Ryan Hardy on. But because Whitaker has two, three, four touches, I know it's a split second... You could argue he could have gone with his right foot. It just got snuffed out a little bit. And those kind of things seem to kind of be evident throughout the evening. And and this is another moment where JB picks up a little bit of space and then gives up a a relatively poor touch there. But we're going to play this through twice. And and we talk about fine margin in moments. So if you just pause it now, JB's just scanned to see where his nearest pressure point is. So he sees it's on the right-hand side. What he hasn't done is scan to his left but he's identified that the nearest pressure point is to his right. Now, he closes his body off. So as the ball comes in, if he was to back pedal, he knows there's free space behind him. But he actually decides to turn the other way into a blind area. So we talk about scanning and timing. He didn't check his 360 degree surrounding. And that was, you know, this, this bit of disconnect that seems to be happening at the minute. And I'm going to talk through this. We're going to play it through first. So Joe Edwards, I thought, impacted the game at times well in the second half in particular. But that pass there sends Morgan Whitaker wide. And you just feel the momentum's lost in that kind of passage of play. And when we talk about attacking cohesion, so as it comes through here, you're going to pause it now. Okay, so Joe Edwards has broken the line and we're running towards their goal. Now, I don't know what's going on on the training ground, and this isn't a criticism, but in terms of understanding, Charlie, Joe Edwards should really, in attacking sense, if he gets the ball now and he understands, just pause it now, if his intention is to fix the defender who's directly in front of him, he will run straight at that centre-back. Now, with um, attacking understanding, Morgan Whitaker would be aware of Joe Edwards' intention to fix the defender. So he's going to deliberately run at him that should be a trigger for Morgan Whitaker to get on his shoulder to invite like a driving slide. But because there isn't any impetus, it's just a wide pass and we've lost that momentum. And now the Wednesday have got three, four, five players behind the goal, uh, behind the ball, sorry. And we, we, we've, we've lost that moment. That moment's gone, that fine margin. So learning to kind of fix that defender, that defensive kind of attacking connection. And, you know, Randall, latter part of the second half, driving here. Whitaker kind of drifts wide. There's just, it's very hard to play through a straight line and a, a straight ball and a straight run when there's not a great deal of space behind you. So we're going to play it through again here. So as we're running through here, if you just pause it now, so if Morgan was to run higher and wider earlier and quicker, it will probably distract the defender directly in front of Rands or potentially. So if he stays where he is, Rands can slide in Whitaker wide. Now, Rands maybe just delays the pass. And because he's delayed it, look, the space is running out. And now that becomes almost an impossible pass for Mumba to get the other side and the space runs out. So there's just... It's just not clicking at the minute. And sadly, we have lost the attacking prowess of Azaz and Kundal, where they were very good at getting intricate connection. Now, this one coming through here is is an interesting one. So we're going to play it through again when we talk about your contribution. So just pause it there. In fact, go back about, as the pass is made, go back to where the pass is made. So I'm going to look at Bundu, who's in uh, their half. So he's closer to the referee. Now, Bundu decides to run beneath the ball, which is is, in, is understanding of the moment. But if he decides to run forward instead, I think he potentially distracts the Sheffield Wednesday CDM who would go with him. So as it plays through slowly, if Bundu decides to run the other way, that CDM would potentially go with him. Now what we'll get is Jordan Houghton, pause it now, If we can imagine that Bundu is now up towards the top end, it might have drawn the CDM with him and then Houghton gets a bit more space to get on. But as it plays through, we've kind of lost that. There's no room now. 
So there's, I mean, a little bit of disconnect there, and and you know we lo- we give up possession. So they're just they're just kind of fractions, but things I think can be put right on a training ground. Yeah, it's it's something that obviously, if you take a game in isolation, you can pick out moments and what have you. If it, if it doesn't work um, in that moment, you can you can make a point of it, which is obviously what Aaron was doing there as part of his analysis. But if you do look at the 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 bigger sort of sample size of the last five matches uh, in only one of the games we've scored, which, which just feels weird to say for, from what we were like and have been like, even under Ian Foster, actually, it's not even just a pre Foster and post, you know, we've, we've seen goals and it's, and it's just not happening for some, whatever reason at the moment. Yeah. And I think, you know, like Aaron spoke about, it's that kind of link up play, isn't it? And maybe in those tight areas of the pitch, you know, how, not even necessarily how do you link up, but how do you create the spaces in the first place? And I think that maybe is the thing that's that's lacking a bit is, you know, the intelligent runs maybe off the ball that drag defenders away. You know, do we keep possession for long enough in periods to, you know, play down one side, drag people around? Because when you bounce the ball around, you open up spaces and you, you pull the defenders out of shape. And, you know, I don't think we do that enough when we're in possession, we turn the ball over too easily. Um, I don't think we, in the last couple of games, have had those sustained periods of possession where you can kind of, as I said, pull the, the defenders around. We'd, we play a lot on transition. And when you're playing on transition, you're relying on potentially two or three players um, to go and do the business for you. And it's worked because Hardy was on, you know, hit hitting form and, and scoring goals. Morgan Whitaker was scoring goals that dries up a little bit and you think, hang on a minute, what's going on here? And how do you then, you know, link those other players back into it? How do you create more opportunities for other players in the side when those kinds of players go off form? So yeah, for me, it's that kind of movement off the ball to create space and areas that you can then be dangerous in. Is it, okay. Is it as simple as what you, you know, you kind of alluded to a little bit there that Hardy and Whitaker just aren't playing as well as they were earlier on in the season? And and obviously they are the two... Danger men for Argyle, top scorer, second top scorer, both in double figures this season. Is it? Is it? Is, you know, can you simply say that, or or is it like what you've said? You need to try and find another way of still being dangerous if they're not at their best. You cannot rely on a player to be, you know, scoring goals as regularly as Morgan Whitaker was. You know, if he carried on where he was at, he'd, he'd probably be hitting thirty goals this season, and that's you know, unheard of, I guess, for a, a left winger mm. or a right winger, essentially, yeah. uh, you know, cutting in on his left foot. But, you know, you've got to have players who will chip in from other areas of the pitch. I don't think we score enough from, from set pieces. Um, you know, we're probably one of the worst teams in the league in terms of, you know, goals directly from set pieces. So um, when other players aren't chipping in and, you know, that pressure becomes heavy on the players that you are then relying on. And, also, on the flip side of that, you've got to think, OK, well, everybody knows who's playing against Plymouth Argyle that Morgan Whitaker is our danger man. So a lot of the time they'll go and double up on him. They'll try and stop him cutting inside onto his left foot. So that should, again, create space for somebody else to find those pockets to be able to do something with the ball. So, um, you know, you cannot just say, you know, Morgan Whitaker and Ryan Hardy have gone off the boil. They haven't scored goals, you know. Two players don't don't win you football mm. matches, so it's about yeah finding those other players who can can come up with those big moments who can win you win you games. Yeah, as you said earlier, we just need one bobbling in off yeah. the backside for somebody. Off, off any, anything, <laughs> anything will do. Uh, right, you're watching Argyle TV, uh, the pre-match show ahead of Argyle's trip to Ewood Park to take on Blackburn Rovers. Two sides who are stuck on forty points at the bottom of the division. There's plenty more build up to come after this.
You're watching the pre-match show on Argyle TV with myself, Charlie Price, and Katie Middleton. Come dressed as twins this afternoon. We're hoping to change into a bright, happy green jumper each uh, come the end of play today when Argyle have the three points in the bag. They are up against Blackburn Rovers, both on 40 points. Um, with 10 games to go, so plenty of matches still to play. Well, like Argyle, Blackburn have uh, got a new head coach in the dugout. John Eustace took over just over a month ago, and he's still looking for his first win in charge. Been plenty of draws during his tenure, including a one-all uh, draw on Tuesday night against Millwall. And both those sides who are battling it out at the bottom, playing out a draw. Um, it is interesting looking at their form, Katie, since, especially since John Eustace has come in. Uh, we saw him do so well, obviously, at Birmingham at the start of the season. Um, and, you know, only one defeat since he's been there, if you take the FA Cup loss on penalties to Newcastle out of it. But not no wins. Loads, I mean, loads of draws. Two twos, one ones, nil nils. Yeah, a lot, a lot of scoring draws as well, I think. Mm. And um, yeah, I mean, when you've got, like we spoke about earlier, Smodic and your your team who is on such a rich vein of form, um, you know, yeah, look at that, one ones, two twos. Um, only obviously the loss to Swansea, but you know, you'd be looking at them again as a team who potentially need a, a little bit of luck. You know, like Argyle a win potentially changes that they go on a little run and I think for me it's whoever can maybe put a combination of results together mm. um is going to be the team that pulls themselves away from from danger but you know we've we know that Blackburn have got a, a good head coach in in John Eustace he obviously was doing great things at Birmingham before they got rid of him um that obviously hasn't gone very well for them either since then so um you know you look at it I think he's come in the same as Ian Foster essentially to say let's be more difficult to beat um, when you're more difficult to beat you can then work on that more attacking football after that but get the basics right you know stop conceding as many goals Yeah, you know, that was his aim when he came in and you know I think he feels like he's kind of done that a little bit so you know stop the rot from that that sense and then you know as you say build those layers back into it with that kind of free flow and attacking football mm. um and that's where you'll you'll pick up your points from, um, or your wins from, I guess, rather than than the draws. Yeah, and it sometimes takes a little bit of time, doesn't it, to to one to change it a bit like that. And they, you know, they have changed their style of play quite considerably from what it was like under Yondal Thomason. And and if you if you even go further back than the time that John Eustace has been in charge with those results, they were losses before. I think they they lost something like four in a row yeah. under Thomason just before he got sacked. Yeah, and and that's what it's about isn't it it's trying to you know stop that rot and sliding down the table in in the wrong direction and yeah trying to be difficult to beat just making sure you've got the basics right you know players understand where they need to be when they're off the ball the more you can get that right then 
you're less likely to concede goals. If you're not conceding goals, you're not going to lose games. Um, but then on the flip side, do you go and win games? Um, so that's the the thing that the, that he'll be looking to to add to the the Blackburn team is you know can you now be a slightly more attacking presence? Can you be a bit more free flowing? And um, you know I think he felt on Tuesday night that they had a lot of possession. They just found it difficult to break down a stubborn Millwall mm-hmm. side. So um, you know it's all those teams around you who are, are trying to essentially do the same thing. You're trying to, to make sure you don't lose games. Um, but to get away from that danger zone, you've got to be picking up points and, and winning games to, to pull yourself away. Yeah. Saw the pictures there from the players warming up at the moment. We are 20 minutes away from kickoff here on Argyle TV. Now, Ewood Park is a setting for this afternoon's match. It was also the setting for Michael Cooper to make his debut for Plymouth Argyle. Quite a few years ago, six and a bit to be precise. Today, he makes his 150th start in green. Blackburn took that corner towards the near post and saved by Michael Cooper from Antonson. I actually just turned 18 the Tuesday before, like a week before or whatever. But um, yeah, normal pre game day walk and whatever. and on the walk, Cam Sangster, who, who was here at the time, told me, I've got a weird feeling you'll play tonight. And I was like, oh, shut up, you know, played off, whatever. Um, and then, yeah, 40 minutes in, Kyle pings a long ball. Uh, Graham Carey whips it top corner, but I didn't even notice Kyle went down. Long ball for by Argyle, on to the Chester Jervis, finding Carey, finding Diago Raga, who's had to fit some pieces. Here goes Carey, his pass, one slight tackle, his pass, his second just outside the box. Carey's oh, one, yeah! Yes! Um, and then yeah, I had to get myself ready for the second half, <laughs> and then I uh, just managed to get through it. Yeah. Just felt like I was in a different world, really. Um, knees were going, trying to just take it all in before you know hearing that whistle. But I, was, I just remember being stood there with the, with the board. Derek Adams on my right, and I was just like, Christ, it's actually happening! Like I'm actually did a player professional game, so. Yeah, that, that was what was going for me, really. Blackburn took that corner towards the near post and saved by Michael Cooper. And the save from Michael Cooper from Antonsen just before the final whistle. The 18 year old on a sub on his debut. Yeah, it's just an unbelievable ground, to be fair. Um, I know they don't get a great atmosphere these days um, compared to what they used to, however. It is a, like you can feel like the history in the ground as well. You know, thinking about teams that won Premier League there and, and the history there. So um, no, it is, it is mega ground to be fair. You can't buy performances like this. A young, fresh-faced. Michael Cooper, six and a bit years ago, kept a clean sheet actually when he came on, Katie. So he hasn't. He's yet to concede at Ewood Park. He's going to continue that today, he's right? Continue that today for sure. <laughs> um, we are just over fifteen minutes away from kickoff here on Argyle TV. You can get your match passes right now from our website, pafc.co.uk. Just click on the Argyle TV tab. We've got plenty more build-up to come, though. That's all after this. Because every time we touch. You're watching the Argyle TV pre-match show. Argyle against Blackburn Rovers to come in just 15 minutes' time. Um, joined by former Argyle women's captain Katie Middleton. And we're going to have a look at the team news again for this afternoon's game. Five changes made by Ian Foster, including Michael Cooper returning to the starting lineup for the first time since a defeat away to Leicester such a long time ago. 150th start for him for Argyle today. The other changes see uh, Mumba and Houghton come back into the side, uh, along with Mustafa Bundu 
and Julio Plagathuello, um, who's going to be part of a back three, Katie Middleton, that has a former Blackburn Rovers youngster and Ashley... Well, I mean, he's still a youngster, actually. But even younger, Ashley Phillips, when he played for Blackburn Rovers last season. Yeah, he's... Um I think he's done well since he's come in. Obviously, he left Blackburn to go to, to Tottenham and then has come to us on, on loan in January. So, you know, he's a he's a big lad for, for 18 and I don't think he's done, you know, masses wrong so far. Maybe in the last couple of games, obviously, he wasn't in the starting lineup up um, a couple of games ago because I think he looked tired. Mm, you know, he'd yeah. played a lot of games in a short period of time, started to look a little bit leggy. So, you know, took him out of the side, but, you know, I don't think you can necessarily, you know, pick up many wrong things that he's done. So I think he's been a good signing for, for Argyle and obviously gives them a little bit more flexibility across the back line to be able to make changes as and when required. Yeah, Galloway, the one missing out today. Um, understandable with his injury record, of course. Uh, let's have a look at the Blackburn team. Uh, John Eustace has made a couple of changes from the side that drew uh, on Tuesday night. Sigurdsson and Ayari coming in. Uh, Dolan and Garrett dropping to the bench. We've spoken quite a bit about... Um, their forward line, Gallagher and, and Schmodix, Katie. Um, Schmodix, the top goal scorer in the, in the league. But, you know, they, they had a big player leave in January. Um, you can see Scott Wharton there, but his younger brother, Adam, went to Crystal Palace for nearly £20 million. Um, that's quite a, you know, that's quite a big hole to fill. I know he was only 19, he is only 19, but he was their real standout player. Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, you potentially look at Argyle and, and Luz and Finazaz and it's, probably sort of on a par you know have we replaced Finazaz probably not you know have they replaced Wharton probably not um so yeah you know lots of areas that I'm sure Blackburn want to improve on but at the same time you know lots of players that can can cause Argyle problems they've got experience across the the back line and um I think whoever blinks first today potentially is uh maybe the one who will come out on the losing side of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's about, you know, both teams getting at it from the, the whistle and uh, not making mistakes, staying in the game for as long as you can and, and trying to make things happen at the other end. Right, OK. Well, we're getting closer and closer to finding out. The final bit of build-up is coming up after this. Got just over 10 minutes to go until kickoff at Ewood Park. Just enough time to have a look at some of the other games that are getting played in the Championship today. And a, well, a shock, really, um, in the early kickoff, Cardiff City scoring two injury time or stoppage time goals to come from behind and beat Ipswich, which has prevented Ipswich going back into the top two. Big win for Cardiff City there, who still have slight sort of playoff aspirations although they are pretty slim they've kept them alive today that is for sure um, there was of course that um, big game yesterday which saw Leeds beat Sheffield Wednesday um, but a couple of other games to to tell you about Millwall uh, against Birmingham is a big one at the bottom Stoke go to Preston Stoke in that final relegation spot. Preston, of course, come to Argyle uh, on Saturday, a week today. QPR, who've really had an upturn in form as well. They have a home tie against Middlesbrough. Um, and then the other games looking more at the top end of the table. Southampton might try and squeak into those top two places as well if they can get a positive re result against Sunderland. We'll keep you up to date with all of those matches throughout the afternoon. Um, just a final word from you then, Katie, on, on today's game. You've kind of said it could be one of those real nervy watches, a bit like um, a bit like Tuesday night. What are you wanting to see, though, from Argyle? What are you, what are you hoping? 
we'll get from them. I want to see us be positive going forwards. And by that, I mean kind of getting more bodies up the pitch, you know, our, f- our wing backs being really positive, try and force their wing backs backwards um, so that, you know, and I, you want us to be better in possession. You know, the turnovers and you know, playing on the transition all the time is, is really difficult. So, you know, can we keep the ball better, build up through the thirds as much as we can? And like I say, try and get people high up the pitch, get get numbers up around Ryan Hardy, um, you know, create those spaces for, for things to happen. And yeah, just being really positive on the ball um, today, I think is the, the key thing really. Well, fingers crossed they can. Um, Ewood Park filling up nicely and it is time to hand across to our commentary team of James Law and former Argyle midfielder Lee Makel because Blackburn Rovers against Argyle is coming up next. Uh, uh, 